In this learning objective, we discuss the benefits of alternative investments. Now, generally, when we think about alternative investments, we consider them to be a complement to an existing portfolio of traditional assets, rather than espousing the benefits of an investor investing solely in alternative investments of themselves. Now, the reason that alternative investments can be quite beneficial as a complement to an existing portfolio is that they have very low correlation with traditional assets. So we can see this here if we look at uh, the correlations between uh, some alternative investment asset classes and some traditional assets like uh, equity indices and so forth. We can see, for example, um, a fund of alternative investments actually has negative correlation with both the S&P index and the MSI World Index. So this low correlation means that you can have added diversification benefits by including alternative investments in your portfolio. Previously, when we discussed asset allocation, we said that low correlations across traditional asset classes mean that it's benefit, beneficial to diversify across asset classes just within the, the traditional asset space. Well, those benefits are even further compounded when we, when we talk about alternative investments, given these low correlations that we can observe. As well as the low correlations of return, there are also some other benefits. First of all, alternative investments tend to generate high returns. However, it should be noted that these high returns are a compensation for some of the additional risk factors that an investor who holds alternative investments must bear. Of note, alternative investments tend to be significantly lower in liquidity compared with traditional investments. So they sometimes can be much harder to sell, and that illiquidity is a risk factor to the investor, so potentially these higher returns might just be a compensation for that risk. Furthermore, because often there is not the same regulatory disclosure requirements around alternative investments compared with traditional investments, we'll find there is greater information asymmetry and they can be more difficult to value. So we know with stocks, for example, our securities exchanges have continuous disclosure requirements where the company is required to uh, disclose any price sensitive information as soon as it comes to hand there doesn't tend to be the same regulatory requirements around alternative investments, which is why information uh, can be much more harder to obtain, thereby creating these problems. However, keeping aside these risk factors, we do note that there are higher returns of alternative investments and, and this is an attractive feature. Alternative investments can be very attractive for investors who have a long investment horizon. Some of these risk factors, and in particular the low level of liquidity, is going to be less of a problem for investors who don't uh, intend to, to trade at regular frequencies. So here we talk about endowment funds and sovereign wealth funds as being key beneficiaries of this asset class. And in fact, what we find is that traditionally it's these sorts of investors who have had high proportional investment in alternative investments. So the endowment funds of some very large universities around the world tend to have high amounts of alternatives as part of their asset allocation decision. And similarly, the sovereign wealth funds that are operated by various governments also have a high proportion. The final reason why alternative investments may be beneficial, and this relates with their low correlation with traditional assets, is that they tend to do well during periods of economic stress relative to some traditional assets. So let's have a bit of a demonstration of this. Here we've got uh, the performance of both traditional and alternative investment classes across two periods of economic stress. That is the period just after uh, the dot-com bubble, uh, which is, we're looking at the early 2000s, and also the performance across the global financial crisis. Now across each of these periods, we can see that if we take stocks as our key traditional asset class. Stocks in uh, 2001 had uh, a maximum drawdown of, of about 14.68%, and during the GFC, a drawdown of about 45%. Whereas if we look at some alternative asset classes such as hedge funds and real estate, uh, in the 2001 crisis, hedge funds were barely affected at all and, and real estate was not affected. During 2008, the impact of the global financial crisis on hedge funds was only half that of our stocks. Whereas again, real estate only had a, a very small decline during that period. So because uh, alternative assets may be defensive in the sense that uh, they hedge against these uh, big economic contractions. Uh, this can provide a boon to investors and, and can provide uh, just another reason why alternative investment asset class is something that should be considered as part of the asset allocation mix.